How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massive Beer Reviews back with yet another review. A little bit of, uh, yeah, anniversary bourbon barrel aged hopeful goodness in the form of Bradley Brewing Project. It is their I Dream of Darkness Imperial Stout. Um, yeah, I've done a couple of Bradley's beers. I did, um, I think it was their Unicorn Girls uh, the first time I was in there. Oh, God. Was it a year ago? And then I recently I did like a Kolsch of theirs. And I was just down at the shore, as you guys know, on a vacation. And uh, I missed a bunch of breweries. Um, you know, I kind of wanted to hit a bunch of them. And I had Bradley on my list. But it didn't look like I was going to get there. I actually went up and around their area, and then there was a big soccer game. Champions League was on that day. And I was like, okay, there's a great soccer bar a couple blocks away from these guys. And I drove past it, and it was fucking packed. It was crazy. And I was like, fuck that noise. I'm like, I'll go to Bradley. I know they have a TV. Shh. You know, they have sports on Jersey. Anyway, um, so I sat there, watched the game, hung out with the owners, and just had a, uh, a couple beers. And it just looked out that they were doing an anniversary release. They did this, and they did a kind of fruited season. I believe it was a fruited season. It's more of a, a, a mixed firm kind of season thing going on. But we're going to do the uh, darkness first. It's about two and a half, three weeks since my vacation, so... Yeah, let's dive into it. What does it say? It says Bradley uh, Brew Project uh, in conjunction with Asbury Park Distilling Company. This is our burn barrel aged imperial stout. 11.5% alcohol by volume. It says brewed in October 2018. It says bottled May 2019. So June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. Um... Yeah, did I do that right? November, December, January. I started off wrong. <laughs> no. Anyway, counting is hard, kids. Stay in school. Um, anyway, and so November, <laughs> December, and then January, February, March, April, May. So you're talking about, what, seven months there. But it says brewed in 2000 and October 2018. Did it go into barrels in 2018? I don't know. But uh, at max, you're looking at seven months at a barrel on the back here. Uh, it says here, the traditional four ingredient imperial stout is brewed without any adjuncts, creating a focus on what malt hops yeast and water could do when balanced correctly. This beer was then aged for seven months. So we're directly in the barrels at, um, at low temperatures in Asbury Park Distilling. First use on blended burn barrel, creating a more subtle, okay, on a first use barrel, creating a more subtle and pleasant flavor, extracting from the oak aromas and notes of dark chocolate sweet bourbon and vanilla and subtle cherry so yeah we'll see what happens um they talk about it being in a low temperature right they said uh, more subtle ba, 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 ba. some months at low temperatures i don't know if i agree with that i mean i'm not a brewer so i'm not gonna sit here and say i know everything about beer but some of the better kind of barrel age producers out there when it comes to beer i know they let beer kind of change in temperature i think it's one of the reasons why king's beers barrel aged beers are so nice because they let those kind of barrels kind of rotate in temperature and i think that helps extract a bit of the flavor from the wood so i don't think low temperature is necessarily something that i would personally call out on a label but um if it's tasty it's tasty that's all we care about and it's kind of cool they put them in one of their 750 growlers but they just threw a cap on it so that's that's kind of cool decent wax Nice little uh, soft crumbliness to it, so it wasn't hard to get off. I'll leave that on there. Let's see what's what. Anyway, so 11.5% Imperial Stout, aged in a local place's bourbon barrels. Was it bourbon barrel again? That I find super unique um, because you're talking about Asbury Distilling Company, one of their bourbon barrels, right? This says distinctly. Hmm, okay. See, it doesn't say that. And that's kind of where, where it's weird for me. Because you talk about bourbon. And you're like, okay, bourbon? It's a bourbon barrel? Well, it can't be a bourbon barrel. It's from fucking Asbury Park uh, Distilling. Um, now, they could have brokered a barrel for them, maybe. Um, I'm assuming. Maybe they got like a bourbon barrel that Asbury Park was going to use in one of their spirits and let them put a beer in it first. That's what I'm kind of assuming here. Because it doesn't say anything about being their barrel. It says at low temperatures... 
in an Asbury Park, Park distilling first use unblended beer. No, it does call them out. It says this beer was then aged for seven months at low temperatures in an Asbury Park distilling first use unblended bourbon barrel. Hmm. I wonder if that means, see, that's where it gets a little bit cryptic, I guess you would say, when it comes to, and maybe I'm just kind of nitpicking a little bit here, but, um, you know, it can't be a bourbon barrel if it's come, coming from Asbury Park Distilling. Can't. This is not a bourbon. It's from fucking Jersey, you know? And let's put it this way. I don't think Asbury Park Distilling has been around for 20 years, so they couldn't really make legit bourbon. Or one that would impart what you would think bourbon would impart. Um... And, but they talk about it being uh, then aged in seven months at low temperatures and, and Asbury Park distilling first use unblended bourbon barrel. So maybe my guess is this. I could be totally wrong, but my guess is that they got Asbury Park distilling, got a bourbon barrel, and they maybe they used it for one of their spirits, and then they let this company age one of their beers in it. So anyway, there's a little crowler. That looks like an imperial stout. Let's let's stop. Uh, Let's stop hanging up on a little bit of the words there and actually talk about the beer and see what's what. I mean, she looks like a big Imperial Stout. She doesn't have that. She's not the darkest beer in history of mankind. She's got nice little legs on her, nice little head on her. She's dark. She looks like an Imperial Stout, but she doesn't look like thick with like five C's, maybe like one C. Let's get a nose. I mean, that, you know, there's a definite bourbon character in there and it comes through really well. You get a nice soft charriness to it. It's, it's, you big roasted malts. Not overly bittering, but you can tell it's not overly sweet either. There's a nice bittering component to it that I think the spirit adds a sweetness to it, kind of bounces that off. You get a really nice soft vanilla verging on a coconut vibe with a soft barrel char to it and a nice spirit component. That spirit smells like it might be just a tad, a touch hot, but nothing too crazy. I mean, she smells really nice. Um... This doesn't mean like anything over the top, like a 24 month age bourbon barrel or anything like that. Beer, but she smells really nice. I mean, it smells like a really nice base imperial stout. Aged in a really nice, well done kind of barrel. And it spent enough time in the barrel um, to kind of, you know, bring out some flavor. Like you said, uh, 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 seven months in a barrel, it's probably about the least amount of time that I would typically kind of want a beer to spend in a barrel more times than not longer the better but six seven months is about the lowest but this smells more like a 12 month barrel to me than a seven so yeah she smells nice big roasted malts nothing overly bittering nothing over the sweet oh, spirit is showing up fine there's a nice soft coconut to it nice chocolate soft char i'm a fan let's dive in cheers That's really tasty, actually. The spirit is hot. So my guess... Ooh, big oak, too. A um, little bit too big for me. But it's nice. As a whole. Um, the spirit's a little bit hot. You're talking about seven months. This amount of whiskey, it definitely went into a wet barrel. With how, how big this is, how robust it is, only being seven months, it had to go in something decently wet. And I don't mean like wet in the sense that there was a bunch of bourbon left in a barrel. That could have happened. But wet enough to where it was freshly drained and there was enough in the wood to where it kind of impart into the beer. So that's definitely the case. Also makes me think it was that way because of how much oak is in there. So you're talking about having all that liquor uh, kind of sitting in that wood, being drenched with that liquor spirit bourbon and then throwing the beer in there and it starts to yank or starts to pull that kind of bourbon out of that wood that's why i believe there's so much oak in this it's very dry very woody i wouldn't even go like vanilla oak or any kind of soft kind of um fresh oakiness it's just a rich woodiness on top of that um, but there's a nice kind of rich imperial stout in there Maybe a little bit overcarbonated, but in the grand scheme of things, when it comes to a bourbon barrel aged beer, if I'm going to lean anywhere, I want a little bit overcarbed and a little bit undercarbed. Um, yeah, it's nice. Um, a little bit, it's sweet, but it comes off more bittering because of the roasted malts and the way that wood comes off, the way that barrel char comes off. I think it's fun. You know, listen, big, huge 
for my taste, a little bit too big on the um, bitterness of the beer, whether it be from a, a singular entity or combination of that barrel char um, beer and that wood combination of the tannins of wood drying everything out and that spearing being a touch hot. It's not like a super cohesive, super easy flowing Imperial Stout. It does have a bit of herky jerkiness going there, but the flavors are really nice. This is one of those ones where I would actually be like, okay, age this. Not necessarily for the long haul. These kind of, you know, bourbon barrel aged beers aren't meant for long haul aging, especially from a brewery that's doing it um, relatively new. But I think after, you know, six to 12 months, this would kind of ease into something a little bit more gentle and be a little bit more rounded of a beer. That's where I think its biggest kind of um, hurdle is, is that it, it's a little bit too herky jerky for what it is. But in the grand scheme of things, there's really nice flavors there. None of the flavors are off. I don't really taste anything negative. Um, it's just, I wish there was a little bit more softness, a little bit more rounded edges. Now you're talking about seventh, 11.5% seven month barreled you know imperial stout it's hard to get really rounded edges so maybe i'm asking for a little bit too much here but i can't help the shit that tumbles out of my mouth i just say that so yeah i like it though let's put it this way i think it's tasty beer i think it's fantastic in a perfect world there would be a couple tweaks to it in the grand scheme of things if i had one of these or if i was going to the brewery and they still had them available i wouldn't hesitate to pick one up and in a perfect world i would open it and my guess, a year, basically, right in the next anniversary, open a year after after you got it. I think it would be really nice. I think there would be, that beer would st still be as robust and as vibrant at its core, but at the same time, a lot of those kind of jagged edges would be a little bit soft. And that would be a really fun beer. Um, so yeah, let's talk about it. It's one of the better bourbon barrel aged beers I've had as of late. It's not in, it's not out. It's kind of cutting the edge there. Um, value and availability, uh, I forget what I paid for it, to be honest with you. I was watching a soccer game, bought some beers and left. Um, brewery only. I believe, I don't know if the, any of this hit distro and leave you with, if you like what we like this. If you like anniversary beers, if you like bourbon barrel aged beers, and if you like bourbon barrel aged beers from breweries trying to do their thing, you know, um, I, I dig what Bradley does. Uh, I like their beers. I mean, um, you know, first time I stepped in a place, I kind of made a couple jokes about it being like, it seems like pin somebody who, who, um, who goes on Pinterest quite a bit, uh, designed a brewery and it's a little bit shiny. It's a little bit new, but I like the beers and, uh, I dig them and they're all over the place, you know, from hazies to, to lagers, to barrel aged beer to mix firm stuff. So that is more of the stuff that we need. And, uh, and, and beer in general. So I like it. I dig it. I think it's fun. It's worth a taste. And uh, yeah, good on you guys for making a... Throwing out a big bourbon, bourbon barrel aged beer for your anniversary. That's always a fun thing. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers. If you want to check me out doing the social media stuff, Beer Massive. If you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice little like a homegrown bourbon barrel aged anniversary beer right now. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.